Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. This video is about how to draw X-bar trees. Um, it relies upon many of the skills that you've already learned about for drawing trees using phrase structure rules, but there are a couple of additional little twists that you have to be aware of. So, first of all, just like when you're drawing a tree with a phrase structure rule, you want to identify the parts of speech for all the words that go together. And you do want to figure out what goes together in phrases, just like you do in, um, with phrase structure rules. And again, you're going to apply the rules bottom uh, from backwards, effectively from bottom to top, if, if you want to do it that way. Or you can also do it from top to bottom, but the order of things you do is effectively reversed. You've got to determine, and this is the new thing, you've got to determine whether each modifier to a head is a complement, an adjunct, or a specifier. And then you have to draw it in the right way. So complements are sisters to heads, daughters of bars, adjuncts are sister to bars, daughter of bars, and specifiers are daughters of phrases, sister to bars. One of the most common kinds of errors that people make in X-bar trees is they draw adjuncts in as complements or adjuncts in as specifiers, not noticing that they're doing so. So you, be, you have to be really careful to make sure that if something is an adjunct, then it's in as a daughter of bar, sister to bar. And if it's um, a complement, it's daughter of a bar, sister to a head. And if it's a specifier, daughter of a phrase, sister to a bar. Uh, don't forget uh, to check your trees against your rules. That's an important thing. And another thing is that if you're working from the bottom to the top, you want to start with the modifiers that are closest to the head. Because if you look at X-bar trees, when you move away from the head, that's when you're going up the tree. Now, if you want to draw trees from the top to the bottom, that is also fine. I'm not going to demonstrate that here. But effectively, you do things in the reverse order. You're going to put specifiers in first, then you're going to do adjuncts, then you're going to do complements. Let's look um, at one thing that I want to draw your attention to to be very careful about. Um, first of all, all phrases have at least this amount of structure in them because there's none of the rules are actually optional. So, um, for example, you, in order to have a head noun, you have to have an end bar on top of it. And in order to have a noun phrase, you have to have an end bar underneath it. So the minimal structure you're going to have for any phrase is this amount of, X, of tree. Now, this may seem excessive to you. Why do you have all this structure when it's just a noun inside of a noun phrase? But we'll come back to that. Secondly, you want to make sure that you don't forget about those adjuncts, that adjuncts are daughters of bars, sister to bars. You've got to have that extra bar level in here. Here's a cue that might help you. One way to know how many bar levels there are in a tree is to count the number of adjuncts and add one. So in this noun phrase, we have one adjunct from Phoenix. That means we have to have two n bars. Similarly, if we had two adjuncts, we would have to have three n bars. This is a really great way to check to make sure that your tree has the right number of bar levels in it. Count the number of adjuncts, add one, and that's the number of bar levels you have. So let's draw a tree here as practice. We're going to start with, we're doing a bottom to top tree, and we're going to start with our adjectives. There are no adjectives here or adverbs. So we're going to go straight to noun phrases, and we're going to start on the right-hand edge of the tree because that's the most deeply embedded structure. And we can ask ourselves about the noun puddle. Um, what elements modify puddle? There's only one here, it's the determiner. And determiners have to be daughter of phrase, sister to bar. So we're going to need a bar level for it to be sister to. 
And we want this D to be daughter of the phrase. So we're going to draw this much structure in. This determiner is sister to a, to a bar, daughter of a phrase. Now, um, we're going to just work our way to the left here. It's often best to just do prepositional phrases whenever you have the opportunity. Whenever you have a preposition followed by a noun phrase, that's a prepositional phrase. But in X-bar theory, this noun phrase is the complement to the preposition. So it has to be daughter of a bar. So that NP is daughter of a bar, sister to a head. That makes it the complement of the preposition. Then to close off this prepositional phrase, to show that there are no more modifiers, we put the PP on top vacuously. Next, let's look at poems. Does anything modify poems? Well, are the poems in a puddle? I don't think that's what in a puddle modifies. In a puddle tells you where the finding happened. So be careful not to attach in the puddle into this noun. Remember, the principle of modification says you attach the phrase into the structure precisely so that it is near the head or attached to a projection of the head that it modifies. So in this case, there are no modifiers of poems. So we're just going to stick that minimal amount of structure on top. Now again, we have a preposition followed by a noun phrase. That is always going to be a prepositional phrase. That noun phrase is a complement to the preposition. So it's daughter of a bar, sister to a head, and you put the PP on top. Make sure you have that structure just like that. Okay, now let's go to the noun books. Now what modifier does book have? It has two modifiers. It has the determiner a, and it has the, the prepositional phrase of poems. We can tell of poems is a complement here because you can't stick anything in between. You can't say a book um, uh, from Phoenix of poems. That's not grammatical. Um, you also can just quickly tell this using the heuristic I gave you that of always marks complements. So this prepositional phrase is going to be um, a sister to the head and a daughter of the bar. The determiner is going to be the, is going to be the specifier. If you're doing um, trees from the bottom up, you want to do your complements, then your adjuncts, then your specifiers. So we're going to attach the complement in first. And it's going to be daughter of a bar, sister to a head. Next, we have a bar level here. Um, and we want this determiner to be sister to that, that bar level. And we want it to be daughter to a phrase. Ask yourself this question. How many adjuncts are there in this noun phrase? The answer is zero. Add one. That's the number of n bars you have. So we have one n bar because there's no adjuncts. Okay, let's move on to Brazil. Nothing modifies Brazil, so we're just going to draw the, the full x, um, x bar structure on top of it. And just as before, we're going to put the prepositional phrase on top of that. Okay, now let's look at man. What modifies man? Man has two modifiers. It has the, the determiner, and it has from Brazil. So let's ask ourselves what these things are. The determiner is going to be the specifier. So it's going to be the last thing we join into this noun phrase. What about from Brazil? Is it a complement or an adjunct? You could use your quick test, which is it has a preposition other than of, which tells you it's an adjunct. But you can do other tests as well. So you can say things like the man with the coat from Brazil. So you can put in another modifier between man and from Brazil. So that tells you it's an adjunct. Here's the tricky thing you have to do. Adjuncts have to be sister to bar and daughter to bar. So we had to add in an extra little n bar category above the n for this prepositional to be this prepositional phrase to be sister to. This in effect, um, is what creates that prepositional phrase as an adjunct. 
We can add the specifier in on top. It's that determiner is sister to a bar level daughter of a phrase. Let's just check this noun phrase with our rule about counting n bar levels. How many adjuncts do we have? We have one adjunct. That means we have two n bar levels. Okay, next we're gonna do the verb phrase. So, what things modify the verb? There are two noun, well, there's a noun phrase and a prepositional phrase that modify the verb. Um, the noun phrase is a book of poems, and the prepositional phrase is in the puddle. So, are, with, are these complements or adjuncts? Well, we can first of all see that the noun phrase is a complement. There's a number of ways to know this. One heuristic is it's the direct object. So that means it's going to be the complement. But it's also the case that in English you can't stick anything in between it and the head. So you can't say, found quickly a book of poems. That's not grammatical in English. So um, we know then that this noun phrase has to be the complement of the verb. That means it's sister to the verb and daughter of the verb bar, like this. The prepositional phrase we add next because it's an adjunct. How do we know it's an adjunct? Because we already have a complement, and you're only allowed to have one complement. So this adjunct here has to be sister to a bar, daughter of a bar. Now, this is a little bit different than the previous case that we looked at with man from Brazil. Although in the puddle is an adjunct, just like from Brazil is an adjunct, we don't need to add an extra V bar into the structure. We already have one. It's the one that we put on top of the complement and the verb. So um, we want this prepositional phrase to be sister to that V bar that already exists. And we're going to put the V bar on top of it. We always just close out our tree with the VP on top. Like I say, we're going to come back to that little puzzle later. And for the moment, we're going to treat TP as we did with our phrase structure rules. When you have a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase, you have a TP. So that's constructing a tree using x-bar theory. You want to pay attention to what is a complement and what is an adjunct. And you want to make sure that the number of v-bars or n-bars, etc., is one more than the number of adjuncts. You also want to construct it so that you attach complements to heads first, then adjuncts, then specifiers. If you were drawing the tree from the top down, it's the reverse order. Stick the um, specifier in first, then do all the adjuncts, and then put the complement in last.